Hey friends, I'm standing here this morning in Mount Sequoia Woods, a beautiful set of nature trails just off the back of Mount Sequoia here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. We're in the middle of the city, but we are surrounded by forest here. I've never been here in the middle of the winter. It's a, a different experience. It really does have sort of the dark wood feel. Anyway, uh, wanted to talk to you this week about the gift of being thunderstruck. It seems to me that there are really two reactions that we can have to lightning and thunder. We can react in fear or we can react in awe. I'm reminded of uh, two dogs we used to have, Grace and Scruffy. When there would be a big event of lightning and thunder, Scruffy would freak out. He would uh, cry and scream and run and hide and just his whole little body would shake. You know, they even make shirts now for dogs like this, a thunder shirt to keep them calm in the middle of a storm. Grace had the complete opposite reaction. When there was lightning and thunder, she would run toward it. She wanted to run outside and bark at it. She wanted to be a part of it, to, to be a part of that shocking and frightening moment. It seems to me we have those two reactions as well when we are thunderstruck by life. Eric Elness describes being thunderstruck this way. Have you ever experienced a sudden flash of insight or awareness that rocked your whole world? Why do we describe these moments as sudden flashes or seeing the light when there's nothing to see? Or why do we claim that they rock our world when the actual world around us remains stable? And then he points out something that maybe we forget from time to time in our modern world. Like the ancients, we too are forced to convey interior phenomenon using concrete external metaphors. What the ancients were trying to describe, which we moderns are too sophisticated to realize, is how the divine speaks to us. I think that's right. And so when we read a passage like this from Job that says, God thunders wondrously with God's voice. God does great things that we cannot comprehend. It's really comparing metaphorically God's voice to the voice of thunder. That was a big scary thing that used to happen to people back in the day. Thunder and lightning were among the scariest things they could possibly imagine. This week on Facebook, I asked a question of my Facebook friends. What kind of moments fill you with jaw-dropping awe? Here's just some of the things that my friends wrote in and said. First, my friend Jeff Dalton sent me this picture. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a picture he took. That is a jaw-dropping awe picture. Sunshine on fresh snow, brilliant fall colors, spring in the desert, childbirth. A beautifully written sentence that strokes colors across the canvas of my heart. That sentence did it too. Watching the aurora borealis wave across the, northern, the sky in northern Michigan. The fall and winter landscapes in New England. I've literally had my mouth fall open driving through the mountains and forests since moving up here. The love and commitment and understanding of my wife of 30 years gives me. For me, one of the places that always fills me with being thunderstruck is the Grand Canyon. I literally, as we drove up to the edge of it, I literally found myself in tears at the beauty, the vastness and the wonder of it. It was one of those moments that reminded me of really how small and insignificant my problems are and how vast and beautiful this world is. There's another image that's popular online which does this too. You are here. Yes, we are. That little dot there in that picture, see it? No, you can't see it, it's too small. That's the dot where our solar system is, our sun is, and that's the dot where everything that's ever happened has happened. Every person that's been born, every person that's died, Every person that's loved, every war, every act of love, every piece of art, every piece of literature, 
everybody who woke up in your town and drank their coffee and went to work this morning, everybody that woke up in this town and did the same, all of it is part of that little dot right there. Now that can either terrify you or that can fill you with peace. It can remind you that all the stuff we worry about as we walk through our dark, dark woods, all that stuff's really kind of small. God thunders wondrously with God's voice. God does great things that we cannot comprehend. God moves in and through all things in our world and in our universe, and it is good. And those times of being thunderstruck, of being terrified but excited by the beauty and wonder of life, those are a part of the way God speaks to us. See you Sunday.